Thank you very much, and thanks everyone for being here on this rainy Saturday morning. Um, I don't know how many of you were at last night's keynote lecture with Dr. Ray Kotomi, but it was a wonderful start to what I think is going to be a really exciting weekend of talks. So it's my great privilege um, to be here today in conversation with Chan Luong. Um, I won't introduce him in great detail because that would take the entire hour that we have today. But suffice to say that he really is um, among the, the, the leading figures in Vietnam's contemporary art scene, um, really known and respected as both an artist and a curator, and indeed blurring the boundaries between artist and curator, as have many of, of the most important practitioners of his generation. Um, he was educated in Hanoi, um, graduated in 1983 and began practicing um, from then onwards. Um, he formed uh, a very important collective of artists in Hanoi called the Gang of Five, who were, we'll talk about this a bit more later, but they were formed from 1983 and active um, in terms of exhibitions from 1990. Um, and in particular today we're going to be focusing on this artwork here to my right, your left, um, which is a, a video documentation of a 2001 activity performance, perhaps, um, in um, a place called Mao Khe, a coal mine in northern Vietnam, north of Hanoi. So the way we're going to run today um, is first, Chan Lung will introduce um, the artwork that's, that's here on show, that's the focus of our attention, and then right away we'll welcome your questions. And I guess the focus of the conversation here um, will be on the importance of collaboration in Chan Lung's work as an artist and as a curator. So we'd welcome questions about um, collaboration in particular. But of course, for those of you who are seeing this artwork for the first time, or perhaps if you've seen it before and it's, you've always had questions about it, we'd also welcome any questions like that. So without further ado, please go ahead and why don't you begin by telling us about the site of this artwork, the, the Malkay mine itself. What's so important about this site? Hello, uh, thank you everyone who uh, come to my talk. Uh, thank you, uh, Nathan Agari. Uh, thank you, uh, Tamares, Rosa. Um, Mao Khe is uh, one of the name is one of the uh, 10 big factory in the whole area of Quảng Ninh province. Uh, you heard about uh, Hạ Long Bay. Yeah, it's one of the uh, uh, touristic place in Vietnam and a lot of people know Hạ Long Bay but you know the landscape of Hạ Long Bay actually is um, Quảng Ninh province actually the, the hundred year of history of uh, coal mining uh, industry uh, founding by French uh, since uh, 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 end of 19th century yeah, end 19th century so uh, people there uh, from generation to generation only have a one job before the tourist is growing. After open door in Vietnam, I mean early 1990, before that only one job because the land there also very hard to grow rice because uh, uh, mineral and coal underneath so the land is very poor and, 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 and have a chemical so rice cannot grow so the only job that they do one uh, one thing that they're working for the coal mining. Um, Mao Khe is one of them, one of big gas. But uh, we have a bigger one uh, next to the Hạ Long Bay. So now we got kind of conflict uh, uh, between environmental issue and then the touristic uh, Hạ Long Bay because Hạ Long Quảng Ninh getting more, uh, I mean, uh, important place for Vietnam for people touring to Hạ Long. So Vietnam, this uh, uh, province government and uh, central government is start fighting a lot how to protect Hạ Long in two things. But you know, uh, uh, coal mining in the Quảng Ninh province is uh, provide estimated uh, reserve uh, around 3.6 billion ton uh, for all over the province. And then I will show you later that they just have a new, brand new well turner and we found under level uh, because all the 10 uh, factory only uh, from the ground uh, level to 100 meter minor 100 meter but now they dig deeper recently just two years ago to 100 uh, 330 and the end will be 480 meter under the ground this will be provide another 3.6 billion ton of coal underneath. So that makes challenging government that they digging coal or they 
led the province to be tourist, you know, green, green uh, industry. Uh, so mean that more people immigrate to work in this one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I show you this one recently, Mong Zhuang factory, one of the ten big, turned to be the biggest one. Uh, it's huge. And actually, this, this also the vision of this inspire Arctic communities a lot. <laughs> and then our, this, you see how it's a propaganda picture that the, Worker not have a mask, yeah, because they they perform for press to take picture, but 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 the real side, <laughs> you see, they perform, yeah. So uh, we choose Mao Khe because Mao Khe have a long history related to the our community, but actually artists, writer, filmmaker, uh, uh, they they working in the coal mining throughout all the. Uh, communist era uh, since uh, Ho Chi Minh took over North Vietnam. Uh, we have uh, both the the ground one. That means uh, that that like a Mong Zhong factory, they they don't have to make any turner because it's a it's a on the ground. But uh, other one underneath still. Deep to half kilometer, still have a lot underneath. So Mao Khe one that we uh, we've been attend in this video is uh, more coal underneath. It's it's the oldest one by France, found founding by France. Yeah. Maybe before we come to talk about the activities that you all undertook uh, that we see in this video, maybe you could talk tell us a bit more about the importance of Mao Khe Mine in modern Vietnamese art history mm -hmm. um, and its sort of site as, a, as, as communist propaganda during the Cold War as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so uh, in 1959, Ho Chi Minh started visiting uh, this province because it's, it's turned in, in the politics of Mai, it's, it's a very important industry area and in the Cold War time, we not have a high industry uh, quality. We only digging the minor, uh, mining thing to sell. So coal here provide for Eastern Germany a lot. And recently, we have a, a Littenberg district in Eastern Berlin, where Vietnamese immigrate community occupy that. And they have a huge uh, market there called Dong Sun Market. It's a former old industry zone in Berlin during the Cold War by Eastern uh, Communist government. And CMN and some German company been imports a lot of this coal for the Eastern Communist part. Yeah, for their, because the coal um, have a lot of uh, function in, in the industry. Uh, so Ho Chi Minh visiting and then uh, Government write the, uh, a lot of project for artists to make propaganda uh, art during the communist time since uh, three years before before Ho Chi Minh visit the coma is from the first trip is from 1956. Yeah, I found one of sketch by Chen Van Ken, one of the uh, leading artists we call Econ uh, Indochina generation who studying from the earliest time of the Hanoi, uh, Econ Boza Hanoi, founding by Econ Boza Paris, uh, artist since 1924, actually 1924, but 1925, it's uh, officially founding the school in Hanoi. So t early 10 years is uh, running by the professor from Econ Boza Paris. Uh, so Chen Van Ken is like the first generation who, who, who studying in Hanoi art school. Uh, this sketch from 1956 is the first trip, like a brainwashing trip. Uh, Communist organized artists need to be working in the coal mining. Uh, they include writer, um, painter, uh, uh, poem, 
uh, filmmaker. So my, my dad, my father, also same generation, and one of the member of Nhân Văn Giải Phẩm is a first revolution culture uh, group who, again, Marxist, Leninist, and Maoism in Vietnam in 1950, in the same year. In the same year, they published a lot of newspaper and a magazine uh, present their voice uh, about communism, and they are all following Ho Chi Minh. They are soldiers, uh, but they are the first intellectual group who are against communism, and five leaders get uh, stay in jail, and the rest are really tightly controlled until they die. And almost of them have a blood disease and drinks a lot of alcohol. Uh, my dad is like a last two or three persons in the group just died a few years ago. My dad, three years ago, just died. Uh, another sketch by Nguyen Sang, also very well known in the China uh, artist, uh, also in 1962. So mean that from 1956, every year we have a many few trips for artists to be in Mao Khe, Ko Mai. Uh, and a lot of propaganda work like this, uh, graphic, uh, Lacker, yeah, and uh, I suppose it's it's good to remember at this point that because of the centrality of art and culture to the propaganda regime, it meant that that all of you growing up and being educated in Hanoi, you were very much aware of this history of modern artists travelling to the coal mines, right? Mm -hmm. So this is very much um, part of the the way that you understood and perceived the coal mines, right? Uh, not only them, even us. Every uh, year, in Russian, every year, uh, the art student also have a uh, three month uh, field trip in coal mining. So even when I first year in the school, also I spent three months here. Mm -hmm. So it seems so the memory is continuing. Everyone mm -hmm. <laughs> should be here. So um, writer also, so should be here. So it's very stick to my memory. <laughs> and when I have a chance to, uh, to, to organize this trip, it's really strong energy because I want to return something new mm -hmm. about the concept of how artists being here. Because through that 20, 30 years, artists just have a right to make, we say, ping, ping presentation. That means only show the positive and propaganda side. We never can be so any cap dark side of the real life of the coal mining, but everyone been here, but everyone have to, you know, make the, you know, the fake version of the reality. That's why make give me energy to, to, to do this project. So this project, when you and nine other artists visited the coal, the Mao came up coal mine in 2001, was really kind of a reaction against everything yeah. that had happened before you, right? Yeah. yeah. So I, I took uh, uh, just a quarter of the poet piece by Chen Zhen. He's also Nhân Văn Giải Phẩm, one of the leading person, uh, uh, really uh, important writer in the group of Nhân Văn Giải Phẩm. And he also spent time in Mao Khe also. And uh, their, their 1956 uh, production is really inspired for artists until today. Uh, a lot of art projects and a lot of uh, individual artists still taking energy from their work since 1956 because the situation of Vietnam until today, the censorship and everything still the same. The cover look different color, but the whole spirit is the same. We strongly control it by our one-party communist government and we know rights, no freedom expression there. And five level of censorship still being there yeah, from the top or rooftop to the uh, local one. Yeah. So this uh, showing how the sense of who support Ho Chi Minh, who fight friend and, and they turn to be the winner, but they immediately they feel sad and they feel the dark with the rain from the red flag. Yeah. So until today, a lot of inspire for that. Yeah. So now we move to talking about your yeah. 2001 visit, yeah? Yeah, yeah. So in 2000, in 1999, uh, in the same time after I founding, co-founding Yasan Collective, Yasan Studio, uh, I start invited to run the project to open Hanoi Contemporary Art Center. Hanoi Contemporary Art Center is kind of a uh, very new form for community government that uh, we try to open 
private uh, control institution, but no, uh, it's not successful for years because they not allow us to uh, to do ourselves have private and independent art space. Uh, I mean officially, Nyasan Studio we, for 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 30 years, for 20 years, we never apply license. We playing that kind of, uh, you know, the method to pushing the green light. Even some sometimes government asks us to apply license. They say, easy, we get license, but we said, that if we get license, that means we chop it in their own frame, in their rules. But uh, Hanoi Contemporary Art Center, uh, the project, uh, kind of collaboration between Vietnam Fine Art Association. Association, the word is showing, is like non-government group of people protect their own benefit, but from communist uh, side, association is all belong to government, and association is turned to be a tool for politics and to control the art community. Uh, like uh, from my generation to younger to the past, that we need to be member of fine art association. That means like a uh, protect label for we can be in, in that society. Um, even uh, no one withdraw. If you are being the member of association, it's like a whole life. So in, after, after I quit the job in Contemporary Art Center in 2003, I'm like a first person in Vietnam send a letter to the association that I'm uh, withdraw. I'm not a member and I make quite shocked for Vietnam community and even art fan, artist fan even criticized me. But they said that you stay or you not stay, not make any people die, but why you have to withdraw? I said I, I, I sent the message that they not functioning for the society anymore. So um, uh, this project relate to the, the Hanoi Contemporary Art Center because one year later in 2000, it's open door of Hanoi Contemporary Art Center. Um, as an artistic director, so I have a right to organize field trip. Uh, officially, I can get an uh, introduction paper from government to go to location area, and then they can receive us officially. So um, my idea is flashing that why I not make another field trip for 11 artists to work. I select almost active artists in Hanoi at that moment, and then we saw another way of practical, and then we saw how much we can we saw the reality. Actually, for 30 years, people saw the fake vision. So the, the, the project is, the ideas of the project is quite, uh, I think artists when invited to join the uh, uh, art project, they think that they will make artwork. Mm -hmm. But uh, I told my friend that, uh, we, we go there to living, to drink and to living and to eat and uh, not making up work. And they, first they quite shock, but uh, also they quite fear because if make up work, they have a little bit pressure that they have to do something and they have a self-censorship mind. So always make artists a little bit inconvenient, but just come to drink and to live, they, they feel quite okay. So we go without any kind of you know, pressure. But you always knew that you wanted to invite others to go with you, that you would go as a group, as a collective. Yeah, I, I'm organizer. Actually, I curate this, but I never using that word in whole of my practical since uh, Nyasan Collective, Nyasan Studio. I never mentioned about curatorial or organizer because it takes people take time to, to learn and to, to understand the role of that kind of new infrastructure in the blank area like uh, Vietnam, you know, uh, through my life when I already went up as a cap painter and the figure for North Vietnam, but uh, no one have an uh, idea of how uh, curation or right fund uh, or lawyer to protect artists or other technical or uh, professional writer, critic or historian, because uh, AV, that job we have, but it's really fake, really wrong thing. Uh, follow Eastern, uh, Russian, you know, theory or uh, always the government they follow and they censor. So 
But so, okay, you told, you told these artists that you invited to go with you that they didn't have to make art, they could just drink and, and live their yeah, life. Yeah. But then what we're seeing in, in the video and, and on the screen here looks a little bit suspiciously like art. Oh, uh, we... Uh, I, I, I already know that they will do something. <laughs> I just cheating them that uh, just for fun, but uh, surely, you know, uh, you see how uh, exciting like this when... Uh, when we saw the image of the worker, which we never can see directly, because uh, before uh, they, they have a rules to divide people to visit the Komai, because also they are faced spy or someone, you know, they, they really scare, you know, uh, stranger came. But they receive us because we have an official uh, introduction letter from the Fine Art Association. And then, um, uh, if we go back to the previous slide, where you, when of the, yeah. the scene of the shower, you all took showers for 45 minutes each day. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why were you doing that? That that uh, that um, uh, information. Uh, after two weeks, we live with them. It's really inspiring. Really give us a lot of energy. That's why our work came later. For example, we only know that they are they are yeah they are working under the ground. But when we make the agreement, attend to went down the turner. Actually, it's forbidden, never can be down there. So we make the very uh, uh, serious paperwork that if any problem, any accident, we took ourselves. And uh, every inside on that, so we finally we got the uh, license to go down. Uh, we saw people walking down there in the dark, and we really sucked, we really sucked. Yeah. And every uh, the director say uh, he's smiling. He say every year uh, if we are less than pe five people die, that's a successful year. And we we, we heard the news that uh, collapse and die every year. But he's he, he's smiling. He say if less than five is a successful, if six is a problem. So that means every year have people die in accident. So when we saw them, it really sucked. And then. Uh, uh, and we got trouble first. That means when we uh, went back to the ground, uh, the coal powder covered fully the body. We have a very uh, cheap protection. It's not professional. And, um, and then we bathing. After performing, we bathing. And then it takes a long time. Cannot. It's turned to be normal. It takes like uh, one hour. But the eyes, around the eye, underwear, but still black. And then I asked the friends, worker friends, why our skin cannot clean somebody? He said that, uh, he laughing, he said, uh, I, 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 actually I should tell you that you should cover cream, every skin, thin skin area. Mm. Yeah, because the coal powder very sharp, they only, not hard, like uh, compared with diamond, but they are very sharp compared with other stone. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the powder, actually, they part to, they stick to the screen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's why it's take, and they part of the oil industry, also, oil, uh, so the oil and the, like, like uh, you start to. So the eyes, after one week, is gone. So we look, very, other people look at that, laughing, that, oh, you make up, yeah, because black oil around eye and, but um, maybe now's a good moment, since on the left screen over here, the steam rice man is, is showing. Maybe you can talk about this, is, which is perhaps the most iconic performance that um, took place at Maokai, Ma Maokai Mine. And of course, your body is covered in, in steamed rice, but underneath the steamed rice is still the coal powder, is it? It's mm -hmm. still, your, your skin was never quite clean underneath. Mm, it's not really, because this, uh, just the next morning after we spend whole days to okay. in uh, under the tunnel we walking uh, 15 kilometers underground for uh, six and a half hour uh, we pass by first the the gate through the first the very old friends style first because friends are founding that so the gate still there with old style of protection very old and then we went deeper to the different part of different area of tunnel uh, Eastern Europe turn uh, support by Ukraine and Russia, and then the last one, the deepest one, 82 meter under sea level. That the brand new one made by New Industry and the stick by 
UK production, the, the metal stick can be hold 35 ton. The stick small like this. But in, in the old generation of Turner, from Russian to the French style, only by wooden. And some, some, so that trip gave us the real story of how coal mining industry growing through, through town. And when we reach to the deepest area, we have a leap to come up yeah, to the ground. It takes 15 kilometers. Mm. So after this, that's why the coal, we, we, we bath things. So you see the, the coal cover like this. Yeah. But the black still there in the skin. So when I walking underneath, suddenly I have a flash idea is very, I, I mean, at that moment, I think it's very romantic and very academy that uh, uh, compare the comparison between the rice and the coal. Because rice uh, is white and soft and sticky, uh, a little bit friendly, and the coal suddenly feel very dense like that, and black and sharp. Uh, because when i small, uh, I have to be in countryside from five years old to 13, early 13 years because American bombing North Vietnam from 1965 uh, and end of the Paris Peace Summit in the end of 1972. So all that period, the East and West negotiate for the peace by killing people. Uh, North communist troops using Russian and uh, Chinese weapons to make territories in the South. Even they bomb in Saigon and fighting in the border. And the American and South Roman American bombing North Vietnam also kind of for negotiation for the meeting in Paris. So whenever they stuck meeting in the table, they kill people. <laughs> so that's the whole scenes of Vietnam War. Uh, and I'm grow up under raining a bomb since five year old until 13 year old. Um, so I stay in countryside, so I know how the farmer working hard is this, to grow rice. So in my memory, I only think the hardest life of people that the farmer uh, who uh, wake up in four in the morning, cooking rice to eat, and they, they went to the rice field around 5.30 or 6 before the sunrise. And they went back home, sunset and then very hard job and eat and they never wake up, they always look down. Uh, so when I compare with the coal, I, I think that very abstraction, so I think about the performance with the uh, steamed rice. Right next, uh, uh, next early morning I went back and then order cooked big uh, uh, many rice and for next early morning and we make it immediately. Yeah the coal mining. And, and you see the whole district is black because the coal powder cover even the tree, you see the video of the tree also not green. And in, in my very classical mind that I need some cap, white body, human body, stay in the middle of where or black, just like that. And how about the actual process of making the performance? You're all working together on, on this? Who, who stuck the, the, the cooked rice to your body? Who filmed it? Uh, I have uh, two, two young guests, a uh, member in the group. Uh, they are, literally, they are, they are actually a member of Nha San Studio, so Le Vu and Nguyen Chi Mai. They took the uh, rice to holding the camera. Yeah. We have a more photo camera by AV artists have own photo, but two camera. At that moment, we have uh, only, we have a uh, uh, high eight, high eight. Uh, from 90s to 2000, we passed by different era of technology. <laughs> we, we first using like a, my early uh, piece owned, now owned by Fukuoka. Uh, the flowing one is made by VHS, uh, very old style, big camera. I, that, that moment I have to rent, it's 1997, 1998. And then quickly to 2000, it's a high eight. And after high eight, we have a six millimeter, and six millimeter, we have a digital. So we have a lot of stuck in that kind of era of video work, uh, just in like a 15 years. Uh, so two high eight camera, so the quality you see not really good. Yeah. And then underground, a lot of powder. 
because they have a big system to provide OCZ and, 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 and win because the, the, that why I call the Komai Turner uh, easy to have an explosion because exactly like inside the engine yeah yeah because the powder mix in the air and any cap so they not allow us bring any cap uh, metal uh, object because it's they fall they make uh, light uh, like a lighter and then boom uh, and then uh, like an engine uh, and then the, the the gas gas in the air also that's why you see the uh, the, the turner actually they Every second can be like an accident. It can be accident. Yeah. Okay. We did say we would ask for questions early. Yeah, so let's see if on. anyone has any questions at this point before we keep talking. Can be questions about what we've talked about so far, about what what you see in the video, or anything else. Okay. If not, I'll let you think for a moment longer, and I'll ask you something else which is, um, you mentioned a few times about Nyasan Studio, which was something that you co-founded in the year 1998 in Hanoi. Um, it was a physical space as well as a collective. It was a place for artists to gather, to talk, also to exhibit. It was, in a way, curatorial, even though you didn't use that term. What led you to form this organization? Um, what, what about your previous 15 years of working in collaboration and in, um, in the Gang of Five Collective and um, in partnership with other artists, what led you to say we need an organization, we need to found a, uh, a, an institution even if we don't register with the government? Yeah, Nyasan Studio uh, is just like uh, the continue, continuation of the, uh, my practical how to find out how to survive and how to change the uh, aesthetic environment in Vietnam because uh, the idea came from Gang of Five when we uh, gathering the group and then early 1990 is uh, start changing the social political uh, vision in Vietnam and we start to went out to abroad so Gang of Five turned to be like a very beginning few visual artists in Vietnam can go out to the Western country. Uh, at that moment, we not easy to get like uh, to get visa to go out because we have to have a uh, exit visa first from police station first. If they allow us to go out and we can go to to uh, to embassy to apply the ent uh, entrance visa. So the passport also, we cannot hold a local government or if you work for office, the company keep your passport. Uh, so after a few years, I traveled to abroad. I found that uh, we lack of infrastructure seems so nothing for artists. So I saw many uh, professional training, high skill who serving for artists that we don't have anything from lawyer to curator to writer to uh, fundraiser to many things, yeah. Uh, so until like uh, 1985, just three, four years, I look back to KL5. Uh, the group, all members of the group getting more he healthier. They start to can be sell their work and they have a, some name a little bit, you know, well in, uh, inside the country. Uh, and start to learn how to live with material life. Yeah. But um, it seems so not changed for the society. So I found, suddenly I found, oh, maybe you are successful artist, but you still weak, you're like an individual person, and never make any change for the society. So from 95 to 97, I learned a lot now, um, which kind of infrastructure we can be well sell. Uh, I, I don't have any power, no connection to the leader, community leader, no money. Uh, so how, no connection to deal with that. So I think only two things can be that the first important is uh, free space, the blank room for people's gathering without fear. Because everyone sells and saw their mouth and their thought and they always 
very afraid. Uh, uh, security police, they say ideology security police, that the main undercover police follow us all the time and everyone have a black, black file. If you say or you do something out of their system, out of their expect. Uh, so the alternative access or in the beginning we say underground, place is important. So the idea for something like Nyasan. But from the beginning, not Nyasan. It takes three years. Yeah. And the second thing I start thinking that the curatorial is turned to be so important. I'm not considering to be curator until today. I just because the first idea is just because of political issue. Uh, if you longly you cannot do anything. But if you gathering people together and you gathering idea, gathering power, because we are can be say so power, not concrete power. So need time and need skill to gathering. So maybe we have a voice. If not, we no voice. Uh, Gang of Fire, no voice. Gang of Fire, just like a decoration piece for the regime or for the uh, community, but Gang of Fire not make any better for the society. So that's why Nyasan Studio founded in 1998. Yeah. And how about the actual space itself of Nyasan? Maybe you can tell us what the, what the name Nyasan means and the, the physical space in which you, in which you chose together. Yeah, Nya San is a very normal word. Nya, that means house, and San, that means the floor, the wooden floor. Nya San actually not mean any kind of typical special name. Everyone say Nya San, that means the minority wooden house. It's a Nya San. But uh, we have to think how to survive. Because in under the, the control by communism, if you gathering five people, Already problem. So Gang of Fire already some kind of they focusing to problematic. That's why seven years we have to working in the dark from 1983 to 2000 because we cannot show up as an official group because it's, for them it's dangerous when you gathering the group of young. That means you make anything new. <laughs> so um, uh, so Nyasan, uh, we not want to put the name so loudly. So announce people that now. So we say Nya San, not make police and politicians scare because Nya San is a very normal name. Even uh, myself until today, I don't have a website, I don't have a blog until today. Uh, I think for a practic uh, practical, uh, if I keep working, I no need to have a system to into the open world, but uh, other way for typical Vietnam situation, it's also better that you you have something for them to to dig in to to. Uh, yeah, so uh, we we take the name Nha San, and then actually I I tried several other places, but unsuccessful. Uh, nearly nearly uh, nearly success, and then the owner or the supporter suddenly they say no. I think. Mm, it takes time for me for three years, uh, from 95 to 98, that three time nearly success, and then the supporters say no. And the day I sitting with Dirk, that the co-founder co Nyasan, that uh, every day, we, uh, every week, we, we drinking there in Nyasan because we are old friends. And I, I look a little bit tired and sad, and he said, what happened? And he said, it takes years, but not, cannot, uh, open the news face and he said, uh, how about this How I said, I, I told you that this how cannot because no wood uh, and the wooden and then the ground floor very low. The ground floor only one mat, 70. Because uh, minorities, they build the wooden house, the ground floor for cow and buffalo and pig living underneath. And they live on the first floor. Uh, also to protect them because before it's a tiger or something, they can eat them. So that's why the animal living right ground floor, so ground floor very low. And then uh, after we talked, I said, so he said that if, if, uh, if you can change the house, uh, this can be turned to be the access. I say yes, but a lot of money. You have to kick a uh, house up, at least one mat or one mat and half to make the ground floor to be the gallery. And then we have to build the uh, wall around. We build a new toilet because the old toilet very <laughs> bad. And then we need the sound and lighting system. And he said, if no way, we have to do. So I raise funds and then successful. And then we kick the hole up 
uh, one mat twenty. So we have a ground floor two mat thirty five centimet high. Yeah, and then yeah, sand board after that. Yeah, yeah. Any questions at this point? Okay, if not, then let's go back in time from Nyasan Studio, founded in 1998, back to Gang of Five. We were talking earlier about um, something of a, a disagreement um, that's uh, been taking place in Vietnam recently about when Gang of Five was founded. So there's one, one version of the story um, would say that Gang of Five um, was founded in 1983 after you graduated when you all began gathering together as a group five artists, all working in a style that didn't fit with uh, the official socialist realism um, that the government required. So gathering together, talking together, sharing ideas, sharing resources, that meant that you were already Gang of Five, a collective. But another view um, taken by uh, many art historians like Nora Taylor, who work outside of Vietnam, will say that Gang of Five as a collective was really formed um, around 1990 when you first started to be able to have exhibitions to show your work publicly, um, to announce to the rest of society that you were a collective. So I'm interested in not just in thinking about who's right or who's wrong, but what those different attitudes or different understandings of the work of a collective might tell us. Whether being a collective means being public and having exhibitions or being a collective really means having the kind of strength in a sense of community that you were talking about before. So maybe can you tell us a little bit about why you believe Gang of Fire began in 1983 when you first started gathering together? Mm, of course the concept of, I mean the practical uh, meaning of collective is changing after time. Yeah. The later collective in Vietnam, I think in the other country and city also the same that young genus and they focusing to the to the a little bit pragmatic uh, direction that uh, to produce works, to support each other to produce works and make something new. Uh, but for my time Gang of Five not think to make any art revolution or uh, not think about reputation or not think about, we just think easily that how to survive. Because 1980s is the most hardest moment for Vietnam, even after war. But uh, physically we very hungry, no food uh, during end of 72 early 80s. Uh, Vietnam uh, war stick right after Vietnam blood American, American war that we stick to the Khmer Rouge war uh, with uh, Khmer Rouge, a Cambodian uh, rise from 1975 and free uh, rocket and fighting from the border until 1978 and Vietnam communist troops uh, took over Phnom Penh very quick in like a few days. Uh, not like a propaganda uh, promotion that Vietnam stopped uh, Khmer Rouge, stopped the killing few. Of course, they stopped killing few because they killed also Vietnam and Khmer from Mekong Delta. Rocket stood to Vietnam. Ding Kiu Le left Vietnam not because the uh, main movement to left by boat, but they, his hometown near border and his family got rocket every day to Vietnam by Khmer Rouge. That's why he and his family left Vietnam since he 12 year old. Uh, that's the true story. And then the Vietnam communist took over quickly because Chinese start fight from the north. If they not quickly uh, stop Khmer Rouge, they, we will got fight two sides northern border and southern border. Uh, just to rescue ourselves, I mean the communist government, they rescue. but they do another job that stopped Khmer Rouge to kill. But the Vietnam communist troops stay there also make some trouble, not killing much people, but also kept new colonial for Cambodia until, you know, mid and up 80s. Actually, the last one they left in also the end of 80s. So that the whole combination. So, uh, mm, uh, uh, because that and uh, Gang of Five growing as an art student, we, we graduated in 1983 and in the very difficult and dark time, even food not enough to eat. 
all the students, no one keep do our work. Even the most important that find a job. Or the whole dream of North Vietnam or Vietnamese young generation in that moment that go to Eastern Europe. That the, that the big dream. Because you, if you, you go by boat, like boat people, so a lot of people die on the sea also, and then road. Because corrupted military and Vietnamese police also take money of the boat people at the industry of corrupting money. They let people go, and then they address them, and they take all gold and dollar, and then put them in jail for one week, and release them, and they working to collect money again, and make board and go again. So some, some people, free time, address it, come back, and then spend a year to make money and sell house, sell, and then selling a board, go to the sea again, and police took them back. <laughs> so for us, we think that also dangerous, and we no money to pay for that. So we only think go to Eastern Europe. Eastern Europe, because you, know, you can apply for studying, or they have a cheap labor export. That's why now we have a few million people living in all from Eastern Germany to Ukraine, Belarus, Russia, and now they being as a third minority or first minority, like in Poland. The big guest is a Vietnamese now living there. So the history in few decades from 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, it divide Vietnam community to everywhere around the world. Even I met a family in Buenos Aires or something. I, I tried to meet them to, to dig back the history. But yeah. those of you who formed a Gang of Five, you didn't want to go to Eastern Europe. Yeah, that's the story. We, we love art, but we know environment for art. So we have to think how to survive. I mean survive to keep pain every day. That's very hard compared with the Indochina generation. And we not think that we should go to Eastern Europe. And we have very like a little number of young people who go backward to the movement, you know. And then the gang of five bone just because of that if we are not together working together, we will maybe die someday. That means agree to go to Eastern Europe or agree to do other job, uh, never do work anymore. Uh, so the reason we gathering, we are same age. We are not like. Uh, different aid and make the collective to, to do something. We are same friend. We knew each other before past exam to the art school even. Yeah, we knew each other when we were very young, like a 15, 16. Yeah. Okay. Any questions from any of you at this point? It's not really a question, but the, uh, the Vietnamese people are very good at and then we often forget, I'm from Japan, so I'm in a better, more protected environment than many in the Southeast Asia, many people. But we tend to forget that is what we survive. People being artists, you mean you're a human being, you have to live, live survive. Yeah. And then like, but we as historians look at what you do what you have done, and then obviously there are many, a few theories about when your activities or your collectivism began. And then uh, that's what I mean by localizing what you mean by collective or collectivism. Because in Japan, we don't really have to talk so much about how to survive physically, as a human being, that's baseline is covered, more or less, especially in like the 60s. But in your case, you have to cover that, and then you have few options like going to stroke, you know, you, we don't want to do that, or like, you know, this and that, and then you created this uh, community to be together. I think that's a collective. And then, uh, a historian's job. Not necessarily it's your job actually. You already explained to us. We sometimes when we do our histories like this, we tend to say, ah, you know, we want the artist to say something exactly what we want you to say. 
<laughs> That's why I think he was trying to ask in different ways, but he already explained to us that it's our job to explain for him. I want to say that yeah. to you, not to the others, because I thank you to, you know, really give us a sense of why, how, why it's necessary to be together. Because to be together almost, you know, defines collectivism. And then whether it's for to live or survive or to make things together or for the exhibition to operate. And then I like, so I have to revise myself perhaps when looking at other areas of Asia mm -hmm. or world. Being together means also to survive. Mm -hmm. And then we have to enter that in the equation. Thank you. Yeah, I explain a little bit more that we all apply for a job. Yeah. Yeah. We have a job to survive. Okay. And even we cannot pay daytime also, we have to work. Uh, I work for the, uh, like a designer and business people for the bamboo and rattan export company. <laughs> so I have a chance to go to countryside and working with handicraft beliefs a lot during, from 1984. I start have a job until I quit it in 1992. Uh, and another member, they work for public singhao, work for university, work for uh, theater, uh, theater, like a designer for a theater uh, company. Uh, we only pay at night. And uh, in seven years, we show work together in our own studio with our audience. From 1983 to 1990, uh, only family people a girlfriend or close friend can come to see. Uh, even in Hanoi, we have, a, uh, we have a diplomatic village, and some of them interest in to see young artists um, work. But uh, sometimes they ask many times that they want to come to see, and sometimes we arrange for they came our studio to see new show. But uh, they have to, even hot weather, they still have to cover their hair because they have blonde hair. And police follow. And we have to tell, tell them how to, you know, uh, <laughs> to dress things too to easy, to be a normal home, a normal people. If have a foreign, okay, police immediately ask, yeah, like that. So that seven year, the collective just mean how to exactly what of survive. I mean, not survive because of material, but survive to keep the act, the, the blame of act still, you know, every day. So every month we sell new work and we took down the old work and we drink a lot of rice wine with peanuts and just very cheap thing, but talks a lot, but no audience, even no writer, no supporter to being with us in that seven year. So the first, that's why I have uh, another good ship that uh, we start collective since the early 2000, because that's the first time we have a public show. So many people, even Nora Taylor, she, uh, she wrote a lot about Vietnam, but she gave quite a lot of wrong uh, detail. I, I incorrect her recently in several uh, meetings because she gave kind of important wrong thing about the way of artists, how they practice in that typical situation, yeah. Other questions? Hi, uh, I'm referring to the video clip. There's one shelter, one house with the one, one, two, two, all this. Is it intentionally done by you? And what does the numeral one, two, one, one, two, two stand for? Uh, this one, not by me, uh, this one like a, a collective idea, but it came from the date of uh, e, uh, the National Minor Day gave by Ho Chi Minh. So he gave the National Minor Day is uh, 11 no, uh, December of 1956. And then uh, we saw the, the country uh, scenes of the Mining life is a very nothing, only the duck, only the powder everywhere. And we try to create kind of cheating project that how to make it change the, the vision. So we make a piece of paper, apply them that. Can we 
write a minor day on the factory, boiling water factory, to make more beautiful. And they think that, oh, that's the minor day gave by Ho Chi Minh, so it's okay. So we not take whole 11, 12, 1936, we just take 11, 12, 11, 12, so it's time <laughs> turned to be like this. And uh, right after the moment, went up from the, 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 the turner, uh, all of our body also have a 11, 12, and we hang around around the, so late evening, we, we start bathing, we start cleaning up, so it's like a whole day performance and walking in the uh, turner and performance, yeah. So uh, no artwork, but artwork really like uh, rise up. After that, uh, after my, uh, call my, uh, my, my uh, steam ride performance, and we paint 300, 300 uh, mirror painting. Each artist paint about 30, uh, 20 to 30 meter, and only in two, three days, the whole uh, blank wall have a painting. Uh, a lot of controversial thing here, and after that, no one sends us. Yeah, have a Mao Zedong, yeah, I have Maoism, and every, every kind of history people, you know, in our life, we, we paint on the wall, yeah. Um, I, I've been so, uh, no, I still have an image, of a whole, whole long uh, 300 meter um, uh, mirror work. So is yeah. the wall still there? Uh, yes, still there. I have, in my video, I even show the uh, short uh, script that we return four months later, we return to the Mai, uh, call Mai uh, in February uh, uh, 2002. Uh, it's still amazing. It's only covered by the coal, so we write a project that people pray water to clean it, but no one make dirt and no one uh, clean it up. They just uh, crack because after because it's very hot here, you know, the industry and hot, and they crack because we use so cheap material. We not prepare, so we run to the local uh, market. We buy normal paint. We paint, so it's it's crack after, but but the work is stay until it die. Yeah. Hi, nice. I'm just curious um, about the space, and you were saying like it was tough to find somebody who would stay and do Yasin with you, but you said that the one partner gave you this, or worked with you on the space, and I'm just wondering how that person felt comfortable, because, I'm, because it's, presumably that person owns the space, yeah. so presumably they have a different yeah. status in society. So. Was it bravery or what is, you know, if you could talk a bit about that. Yeah, it's, it's a big question. That's why previously, three years before that, I'm still unsuccessful. Because the owner of the space or the business people, they first they excited with the idea. Because it's like a transition time. So the idea make people exciting. But uh, after they seriously thinking, they feel dangerous. Because they, they, they are afraid the government. So that's why Mr. Duck is a person who, who co-founding the set with me, that a very old friend. He also asked, he's an uh, older generation of the art school student, and he worked with me in the same company. Actually, they, 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 work, they work for earn money. And then I came as a younger student, um, supported by the older. Yeah. So we are very old friend. And he's born in the intellectual family also. His father is one of the famous writers during the French war time. And his brother, sister, all visual artists. So himself is a person who really big heart to support art. And we've been organized traditional culture in the wooden house previously since 1992 when, we, when he found a house, we, he built a house. Uh, in Hanoi, 1992, and already have a, like a poetry reading and tradition, folk song, and everything happened there. So the house turned to be like a country house, but without any kind of contemporary idea, without kind of interact to the ground level and to the public, just for the small group of yeah, ascetic people gathering, just like that. So he's a very unique person who received it. 
but however, whole life he he's dealing at the antique uh, and then uh, building wooden house business. He's a uh, one of famous people in Vietnam. Bring the minority wooden house from the mountain to rebuild in resort or rebuild for the private land, uh, summer uh, vacation house like that. So this work also in some case as a promos for him because a lot of we make so then a lot of audience came and then support for his business and people know Nha San that means he can sell his antique and production so both sides yeah, also sometimes he got trouble with police come to stop us he also trouble with him so I mean he's very good and support and his daughter now one of the female contemporary artists Vietnam contemporary artists so he stick to all history of our yeah, our development of art yeah we have time for one more question. If not, I have one more question for you, which follows on from what you've just said about Duke's daughter, Lin, who's um, a well-known contemporary artist today. So I'd like to ask you about the next generation of collaborating artists and the next generation of artist collectives. You founded Nyasan in 19, uh, 1998. Uh, in more recent years, a new generation has formed as Nyasan Collective, and they operate with the, this, they've operated in many different spaces and now for some time they've had no space. So I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about how you see uh, the situation for the next generation of contemporary artists in Vietnam today in terms of collaboration and collectives and what you think is in, in store for the future. If um, joining together as a collective for you was partly about survival in the beginning, what drives uh, the next generation of artists to work in collaboratively and in collectives? Mm. I think uh, the character and the mentality structure of the young generation is quite very different with our generation. But uh, typical Vietnamese history, they cut the society to be many thin layers. Before we say 10 years, each order is different perspective and different, you know, own history, different practical form. But it's getting more thinner uh, until now. But um, Actually, I saw the truth that uh, uh, my initiate idea for Nha San and also Mr. Duke and the first generation is very, very different with the young Nha San collective group. Yeah. Uh, we look to the, the role of collective and the role of art in societies also quite different. Yeah. Um, I think uh, from the early Nha San, we not have uh, any kind of strict uh, rules of member membership. No, uh, everyone drop there uh, can be member and can be friend of us. One minute also Nha San member or ten year also the same. That's why we have a wide range of different art practice, in people, including filmmaker, uh, choreographer, contemporary dance, and we are also founding. Uh, the earliest in Vietnam who who writes noise and sound movement, uh, not musicians, and um, uh, visual artists and part of music, but they not have an idea to write noise and sound in their own field, and they write in Nha San first. So the first beginning, new contemporary, uh, new uh, contemporary dance also practice there. The new theater piece with Kim Ngoc and with um, music theater also practice there. Uh, new sounds and noise uh, practical also there in Nha San. So because our open for everyone can join and my idea actually I learned from abroad and I learned from the from the traditional country that everyone can be uh, we put a mat on the public place at the jail, a traditional folk uh, perform, performing. So the mat everywhere that the state and the state for public so the interactive in the old tradition country in Vietnam already uh, interact with audience a lot. So the border between audience and the uh, and the performer is quite blur. Yeah, like a performer came. Tôi ra đây có phải xưng danh không nhỉ? That means uh, is it I'm famous already? Is it I have to tell my name? And the audience say no, no. You have to say. Oh, audience say oh, we all know. So the performer always dialogue like that. So I think the concrete time that we receive Western form of art is good 
But in some cases, like uh, we receive the whole administration, Western form of the physical border and everything is good. But in some cases, in artistic means that we lose kind of very natural knowledge of the traditional knowledge. So Nya San, we play with that kind of philosophy. But the collective one, they want to grow another one. The Nya San collective, the young one, one Ling, that they want to be kind of officially or uh, institution. They start to have a structure. They want to get license. They want to, you know, build up the. Yeah. So it's quite different. But I I don't want to 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 talk about how they successful or not. But they start adapted Western reading models a lot in their activity. We more using the sort of natural and local to be survive and to write it to be like a typical form of surviving or. Uh, sustainably, but they are mostly adapt Western reading from theory and everything and uh, admissions and structure to their new collective. That's the most very different between Yasan Studio and Yasan Collective for today. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Everyone, please join me in thanking Chan Leung.